Well, hello, my fellow Americans and fellow Christians. Peace be unto you, and peace be in our time. My fellow Americans, what Trump has shown the entire nation when he incited a crowd to sedition and overthrow is that the internal disease of Anglo-Saxon monarchy is still a dominant thought in the minds of a large portion of our country. It is worthy to point this out due to the fact of the insurrection on Wednesday. For the Anglo-Saxon thrive of politics and religion was incendiary and bolstered by Trump, pouring gas on a crowd who have been given over to a moral obsession and religious fanaticism on the behalf of their Celtic Germanic leader, Der Fuhrer Trump. Historically, is Anglo-Saxon who has turned political combats into moral crusades with no remorse, as we are witnessing today. It is written in Scripture that men will be given over to a strong delusion in the last days. These may not be the last days, but it does not mean that the last days is the only time God will give people over to a reprobate mind. I tend to believe the Anglo-Saxon is simply sub-intellectual and swayed easily into beliefs, conspiracies, with no ability to find out the truth. On the other hand, Scripture says there will be a falling away of true faith in Christ. And because Christians do not want to retain God in their hearts, God will give them over to a strong delusion. Not only are citizens deluded in our time, but this brings us to the obvious Bible thumpers at the overthrow of the Capitol, who in their delusion were waving their Bibles and chanting, Kill Mike Pence. To think this is a Christian character, Having the absolute intent of murder is a wickedness unprecedented in the church. It is not only atrocious, it is the seed of a coming greater evil because of the fanaticism of evangelical leaders who have led their followers down a path of lies and deceits. They have continued to praise Trump over and over again as a god to their followers. And it fueled the fervor of a moral conflict in their followers. Instilling in them the necessity of supporting Trump because he was the chosen one and the only savior of religion. A deceptive plot to involve religion in politics. A silent attempt to overthrow separation of church and state, common humanity, and the freedom to choose one's own path in life, obliterating it through their evangelical belief and unwavering support of their seditious leader, Trump. So we saw Trump inciting sedition in the Anglo-Saxon majority, who are easily convinced of conspiracy running the same gambit as evangelical fanaticism. Both were distinct in their causes, though differentiated by type, both having a mixture of their forefathers' beliefs, rushed into an overthrow of their government with no remorse or second thought, sticking to the hereditary guns at the behest of their fewer. Among free men, Abraham Lincoln said, there can be no successful appeal from the ballot to the bullet. But the pathological character of sedition historically uses violence and murder as a means to instill a dictatorial leader, a fascism of rule, revealing to us fascism is still a violent and prevalent thought in our country. Trump proved to us that whenever there are sharp conflicts with others, he tends to worsen and we use any means, including inciting riot, violence, and murder to win his struggles. These are the same ideals he has mastered over his followers as we witnessed on national TV. 
Hitler inciting a crowd of followers to a violent, seditious overthrow of democracy, which has now informed the general public that the ideal of fascism is very much alive and well in our present day. My fellow Americans, I do not think most American citizens realize the seriousness of the hour. Trump the uneducated resorted to a pathological Ku Kluxery and the hocus pocus superstition of fanatical evangelicalism to overthrow democracy and regain his power. His overthrow would not just be of government. The overthrow in his regaining of power would become a Fahrenheit 451, a fascism burning all the values of a free society. We would see a complete destruction of the arts, literature, and critics, a reorganization of science, engineering, and technology, using these for power and control of the country and the world, a changing of education for the admiration and adulation of the state, mentally forming within society a socialistic dictatorial state of rule. Philosophy would be subject to only what the state allows to be read or published. Industry, agriculture, manufacturing would be used to bolster military power and used to dominate world trade and competition. Fascism will erode common decency, the common good, democracy, freedom of speech and expression, freedom of the press, freedom of worship, individualistic progress, and will deny citizens the power to choose one's own path in life. Allegiance will be only to the Fuhrer. Everything he thinks and says will be demanded to be followed. This is what is facing the country at this perilous hour. My friends, America has become as Babylon the Great in Revelation 18. We read in Revelation 18, 2, And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the Great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird a description of our politics and the country at this present hour. The evangelical church is described in the scripture as the habitation of devils. Barabbas shows us this devilish pattern of our time, for Barabbas was a religious murderer and seditionist, not a follower of Christ. Christ said the devil was a murderer from the beginning showing us that any Christian giving party to murder and sedition is influenced and moved by the demonic powers of our time. St. Paul writes about this in 1 Timothy 4, and it is descriptive of the evangelical uprising of seditious character that was in our country on Wednesday. St. Paul says, Now the Spirit speaks expressly, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to the seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. A complete description of evangelicals and evangelical leaders today who have followed the incited lies, deceits, murder and sedition of Trump. No matter how you look at it, a demonic antichrist spirit of fascism is now in evangelical circles using the name of Christ to infiltrate and destroy the true following of Christ, seeking the destruction of the Holy Ghost in our country and eventually the world. Christians are now following the dictates of evangelicalism, not Christ, a religious sect outside the will of God. 
Evangelicalism cannot be found anywhere in the book of Acts or anywhere among the saints in your Bible. <clears throat> Second Timothy 3 describes the citizens and Christians of our time. It reads, For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. And here is the key for our day and age. Having a form of godliness but denying the power of thereof, from such turn away. Now as Jonas and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. Thus, my friends, a more accurate analysis of people and Christians in our country. So I leave you today, my good friends, with these powerful images I just spoke to you about. May you take them perfectly to heart with the thought, Today is the day of salvation. For we are warned in Scripture that the children of Israel waited one day too late to enter into the promised land. So God bless you and God bless your coming days with the insight of what his hand has brought forth in our time and what he intends for us to do in the coming days of our future. God bless you and God bless the United States of America.